Hello everyone, this is David for ChessLessons.com and today I'm going to go over the game of F. Vittorio, rated 1230 versus Miso de Shiba from the under 1300 Blitz Arena. Uh, this was a five minute time control and some important lessons and theory, opening theory to learn. The game started E4, uh, E5. I'm going to look at this from the side of black, from black's perspective. Uh, knight F3 and black defended his pawn with knight c6 um so over here uh common move is knight to c3 and there's some theory over there that you might want to be aware of which is knight f6 um, d4 takes takes bishop b4 um, followed by knight takes, pawn takes, bishop d3, d5, castles. And this was just played in the candidates tournament where white played bishop to g3, Wait a second, I think first what happened was black castled and then white took this pawn and then he played bishop to g4, f3, um, bishop h5, and this was just a few days ago in this year's candidate tournament. So you might want to take a look at that theory. Okay, going back. So in your game, um, that didn't happen. In your game, what happened was you played bishop c4. Um, one thing I want you to be aware of is uh, after knight f6, which you played, a lot of players will play the fried liver attack with knight g5. And in this case, you should know that the move is d5 takes, and then you have two options. One is the tricky knight to d4, which is called the Fritz variation. And the other one is the more common knight to a5, which follows up with bishop to b5, c6, takes, takes, and then he has two options. One is queen f3, which you should know the theory. Maybe you want to come to Lee Chess and see some of these top GM games. And the other one is bishop to a4. So you should you should really know this um, just in case you have to you have to face it. Um, so let's go let's go back now. So I have actually one question. So after this, is this okay? It says it says this is actually losing for white. So I'm not I'm not so up to date with the theory myself, I guess. I think bishop to d3 is better. I just remember a lot of players used to play this. So maybe it's outdated now. So something something to look into, maybe how to press your opponent after bishop a4. So uh, let's go back and see. So he played d4. Um, so this gets complicated. The whole point of d4 is basically, let me turn off the engine, is he wants to get at your king. He has an extra tempo because he's white, and he wants to get at this king. So one way you could avoid this is just go bishop e6, and then if he takes, you take, and if he takes, you take. Um, or you want to actually take in a way where you end up uh, taking last with your knight, and then you gain an extra tempo attacking this bishop. He has no time for f4 because you take off the bishop. So that's one way to avoid it. Um, another way is d6, and then if he takes, you take, takes, takes, um hold on one second so if he takes you take this way actually and then queen takes queen knight takes knight takes and knight takes and i think here you're even yeah it's pretty even but you need to know some theory so there's no queens on the board it's pretty quiet um pretty drawish but uh, obviously there's going to be a lot of tactics but you won't get checkmated early in the game Okay, what you played is probably the most sharpest, most dangerous line, but also the main theory line. But you need to know theory here. You need to know what to do after, because if you don't, you get in trouble. Okay, so just based on principle alone, what's your number one goal here? Your number one goal here is to castle. 
So um, one way you could castle maybe is bishop e7, let's say, or bishop c5, because it gets the bishop out of the way so you can castle. So the, the obvious question is, okay, let's say you play uh, bishop e7 and he pushes the pawn. Um, will you survive this? Yes, because you just play knight e4. And after rook e1, I think you have d5. So here you're fine. Um, knight goes back and you can castle. Let's see what else? Let's see after bishop c4, same thing. Let's say he goes uh, e5. Then you actually have d5 here. Takes, takes, and it's saying rook e1 first, which makes a lot of sense. Bishop e6 uh, takes, and I think rook g8. So here you survive, and you'll see here there's a game, Jones versus Batista Bruzon. I actually played Bruzon many times, uh, over 30 games. I can send you the games, and I have one draw against him, even though his rating is about 800 to 1,000 points higher than mine. I drew him into Evans Gambit. Um, so let's go back. Um, so yeah, so here's, here's just basically some theory you needed to know. Um, another option you had is take this pawn, rook e1, d5, bishop takes, queen takes, knight takes, forking these two pieces, and now you have to choose between queen c4 and queen to h5. If you play queen h5, just be really, really, really careful here because there's some traps. So after knight takes, um, it's advisable to play bishop e6. And over here, you'll see there's a lot of grandmaster games here as well. Uh, and what you don't want to do in these positions is play bishop to e7. You want to you want to develop your bishop actually to d6. Um, so if you want to see some more concrete variations, I can go into it deeper. But okay, let's say you play bishop g5 here. Don't play this move. That's a losing move. Instead, play bishop to d6, and this is where knowing some theory really helps you win games. Uh, but from a practical standpoint, like a very practical standpoint, okay, what don't you want to happen? You don't want to get checkmated in the center, which is what happened in your game. Practically speaking, how do you do that? Maybe just solidify your center and try to castle. So instead of like taking this pawn, just play bishop to d6. Worst case, if he pushes, um, I think you're fine here. Your your knight, let's see, could just run away, and you're fine. The position's very closed, and like we said, if he takes here, you want to take with the bishop because you want your knight to end up here so that he loses another tempo for his bishop. So yeah, I hope that helped. I know it's it's a lot of theory, a lot to remember, but just remember, king safety is one of the most important parts of an opening, especially if you're black, you're down a tempo. You want to hide your king as fast as possible. So um, if you ever get this line again and you decide to take, um, just try to just try to remember the theory. Try to remember this line. Um, what I'm what I'm advising is that you just play bishop e7, and you know if if basically knight takes uh, pawn, uh, just play d6. Yeah, try to try to avoid having your king be exposed. Um, if you want to play bishop c5 and he plays uh, e5, then I guess you're forced to counter strike in the center with d5. Takes, takes, and here he has this intermezzo rook e1. I mean, he could just take here, but uh, it's probably not, not going to be the best move for him. That's a lot of theory. Hope it helps. And uh, let me know if you have any questions.